if you're riding a twin cam 96, you're probably looking at an upgrade to a 103. Now, that extra seven cubic inches, it does make a difference, but have you ever considered just a camshaft in your 96? By changing the camshaft out, you can get some impressive gains that are right up there with a 103 with a cam in it. Today, we're gonna to take a look at what a stock 96 makes and what your average 96 is gonna make on the street with nothing more than a stage one. Then we're gonna go look at several cams, several different dyno graphs. We're gonna compare some numbers. And we're gonna see if we can narrow down what would be the best cam for you and the way that you ride. By putting a cam in your 96 inch twin cam, it really brings that 96 up in line with the performance of the 103. And I was really impressed when looking at some of these dyno numbers. I couldn't really believe that a 96, seven cubic inches less, could really run with a 103. We're talking same engines, just one's a 96, one's a 103, but minus the displacement difference, we put the same cams in them, we're talking stock heads, just a stage one. Now, granted, a pipe, different pipes are gonna make a little bit of difference in this. Depending on which exhaust you're using, putting a cam in a 96, it can run with a 103. It's gonna pull about the same numbers as a 103. Close to the same horsepower and the same torque, and this is at a fraction of a cost of converting your existing 96 to a 103. So we're gonna take a look at some dyno graphs, check out what the stock 96 is making, look at what a set of slip-ons, and then what a two-into-one exhaust can do for your bike. But before we get into that, please be sure to give the video a like if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's take a look at some numbers and see what that stock bike's making. First up today is the stock 96-inch motor. This is completely stock, stock exhaust, stock air cleaner. We're producing max power of about 64.80 horsepower, and max torque comes in about 78.72 about what you would expect from a stock 96. Now, let's take a look at what a typical 96 on the street is gonna look like, with just a set of slip-on exhausts, and a free-flowing air cleaner, and a good tuner. Now we've taken our stock 96, we've put some slip-on exhausts on it, we've got that free-flowing air cleaner, and a good tune on it. Our horsepower has risen to 72.53, and a max torque of 87.26. This is pretty typical of just about any 96 out on the road today. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we swap the slip-ons out for a two into one exhaust, retaining the high flow air cleaner and the good tune. Now we're starting to get somewhere. With a two into one exhaust system, high flow air cleaner and a good tune, we're making 80.06 horsepower and 94.21 foot pounds of torque. Now, while this is a pretty good numbers, this still just isn't enough. There is still more in that 96. Now the next logical step is either to upgrade to a 103 or go ahead and put a camshaft in it. Well, 80 horsepower is not bad on a 96 just through an exhaust and some good tuning and of course a good high flow air cleaner. That isn't bad at all, but there's still a lot left in that motor. A lot of people may be happy with a stage one at 80 horsepower, but if you want to get to the next level and not really spend the big bucks and in investing in a big bore kit, camshaft is a great way to go. So let's start off today and look at the Woods TW222. This is the same cam I featured last week for the 103s, but it'll also bolt into a 96 without any further modifications. Just make sure you get a good tune on it. But let's go take a look at the graph and see what kind of power we can make with a Wood 222. The Wood TW222, this is an excellent bolt-in replacement for your stock cams. This works well with the lower compression of the twin cam and it also has a good early to mid torque range on it. We get a max power of 94.54 horsepower and max torque of 105.87. That is a huge improvement just over the two into one exhaust. And these numbers, like I said, they are not that far off of the twin cam 103's power numbers with this exact same cam. The Wood TW222 is a great all around cam. This thing bolts into just about every twin cam motor out there and produces some major gains. That was 14 horsepower over a high dollar two into one exhaust system alone with the stock cam, stock head, stock everything. Only thing that was changed was bolting in a cam. 14 horse and over 100 foot pounds of torque. This is out of the twin cam 96. To me, that's really impressive. Now I'm not trying to make this the wood cam show, 
but they were by far some of the most impressive cams I found out there. So the next cam I wanted to show you guys today is another one from Wood. It's the TW555. And I had a lot of people ask me, hey, what's a good cam to upgrade my Screamin' Eagle 255 cam? And the Wood TW555 is probably the best answer I could give you. The TW555 is another excellent bolt-in camshaft. It has a great broad power range. And the best part about this cam though, is it works well with your stock compression, which is typically pretty low on these twin cam engines. But at the same time, it also works well with a little bit of higher compression as well. So if you decide to modify a little bit when you're putting the cam in, put some higher compression to get a little more power out of it, this cam will handle it and it's gonna respond very well to that. So let's take a look at what the 555 cam can do for us. And also I'll show you a little bonus where it's compared to a Screaming Eagle 255. Now this wood cam comes out swinging. At less than 2,500 RPM, we already start building power and torque. Our torque runs up to a max of 101.27 foot-pounds, and our max horsepower is at 96.21. Once again, this is with a 96 cubic inch engine with the stock heads, stock compression ratio, and just a good free-flowing exhaust system, air cleaner, and a good tune. This cam builds excellent power all throughout the RPM range. Even the torque curve maintains pretty flat from 3,000 to about 4,500 RPM where it starts to taper off. But even where that torque's tapering off, you're still building horsepower all the way up to what looks like about 5,500 RPM before it levels off and falls off just after 6,000. My best answer on upgrading a Screaming Eagle 255 has got to be this Woods 555 cam. The Screaming Eagle 255 cam comes in at 86.80 horsepower with a max torque of 99.97. Now just by swapping out to a Wood 555, you're gonna get 96.32 horsepower and then roughly 103.23 foot-pounds of torque. That is a massive gain over that Screaming Eagle 255. So if you're running a CVO that has that 255, you might wanna give this Woods 555 a look. So the Wood cams run really strong. They pull really hard throughout the RPM range. But like I said, I'm not trying to make this the wood cam show here. I was just really impressed with how their camshafts looked and with what kind of performance they're getting out of these things. But let's switch gears for a little bit and let's look at a fueling cam, the Fueling 543. The Fueling 543 is basically a compromise between the Fueling 525 and 574. This is an excellent all around cam where you're not really targeting any specific area. So you might give up a little low end torque and a little high end power, but you got the best of both worlds here. And what I mean by you have the best of both worlds is that this cam comes on at about 1900 RPM and it'll pull all the way through 6000 RPM. And that's pretty impressive. So you're not getting a cam that comes on a little later on the bottom to run higher on the top. And also it doesn't come on a lot sooner on the bottom and then taper off on the top. You've got a really broad range with this Fueling 543 cam. Here we have a 2007 Dyna 96 with this Fueling 543 in it. Stock horsepower came in, uh, looks like right about 70, and our stock torque just a little over 80 foot-pounds. Now with the 543 cam in, it produced about 90 horsepower and 100 foot-pounds of torque. That's not bad for a cam that's made to be a compromise but let's take a look and see what we could get out of a 96 in a touring bike. So here we have a 2010 Bagger with a 96 in it, just a different tuner and a different exhaust system, but this thing cranked out roughly 100 horsepower and a little over 100 foot-pounds of torque. So that just kind of goes to show you what a difference in tuning and an exhaust can make on basically the same engine with the exact same cam in it. So Feeling makes a pretty nice cam, not bad for an all-around cam. It doesn't make quite as much horsepower as the wood cam, but I wanted to put some options out there and show you guys kind of the difference in what cams do between different manufacturers. And I try to keep it basically bolt in and I try to keep the videos meant for somebody that's looking to do something to a stage one motorcycle. You're not really wanting to get into head work or changing springs or anything. So in last week's video, I showed you what the Redshift 525 can do in a 103. The Redshift 525 also fits the 96. This is a good cam that if you're looking for some passing power, especially if you have a touring bike. This is a great street cam and a good touring cam as well. Plus it'll help those big heavy bikes power around just about anything you're looking to pass. 
So let's check out that Redshift 525 and see what it looks like in a 96. This Redshift 525 is definitely not a horsepower producer, but it really makes up for it in torque. Now they're showing our stock horsepower peaking out at about a little over 60 horsepower, and then our torque's roughly about 80. Now with this cam, the horsepower stays pretty flat at 70, but that carries throughout the entire RPM range, and it doesn't really start to drop off till almost 4,000 RPM. But look up at the torque. The torque's well over 100 foot-pounds, and like this graph is showing, this is 55 miles an hour in sixth gear. This cam is a roll-on cam for passing. Now the Redshift cam's really soft on horsepower, but it is really big on torque. I couldn't believe how much torque that thing actually produced with a six gear run at 55 mile an hour. That's not bad. I mean, literally, if you're running down the highway at six gear, only thing you gotta do is twist the throttle. And if you downshift, you're gonna get even more out of that. I really like that cam, especially for a big heavy touring motorcycle. Which, speaking of big heavy touring motorcycles, I know, I'm back to the wood cam again. This wood TW6-6, straight bolt-in cam, great for touring motorcycles. You get excellent torque and power from idle all the way up to 5,500 RPM. It's got a good broad range in it. And I wanted to show you that, that Redshift 525 first so you can see the difference in what it does versus this wood TW6-6. Let's take a look at it. This wood cam, like they said, comes on strong right off idle and it carries all the way up to a max torque of 103.06 and max horsepower of 92.32. This really kind of blows the Redshift out of the water. The Redshift was only making about 80 horsepower and here we're getting 92 and max torque on the Redshift was only about 90 and this torque's 103 foot pounds. I think it's fair to say wood makes a really nice cam for these Harley 96s. That's kind of interesting between the wood and the Redshift. Both of these cams are made for heavy touring motorcycles but I was really impressed how much of an edge that wood cam had over the Redshift. Not to say that the Redshift's a bad cam. I mean, you look at the dyno graphs, you might decide the Redshift's a little more in the areas that you ride versus the wood. So we looked at a lot of quality cams for the 96 today. And if you go back and you watch my video on the 103, a lot of these are the same cams that were in the 103 video. And the horsepower numbers between the Twin Cam 103 and the 96, they're really not that far off. So for me, if you, I have a 96, I might kind of forego converting over to a 103 and just put a cam in it for a little while until I get used to it. Then I might go ahead and convert to the 103, but definitely converting to the 103, put some compression in it because you're really not gonna get much more than what you already have with your 96 with one of these cams in it. But you guys let me know what was your favorite cam? What would you go with? Would you go with the wood? Would you go with that kind of all around cam from fueling? Or if you've got a touring bike, would you go with the Redshift or would you go with that wood? If you have a 96 and you're thinking about converting to a 103, I hope this helped you out. Maybe, maybe you decided not to go with the 103 and you decided to keep your 96 inch displacement and just put a cam in it and go on down the road because the power numbers are pretty close. Taking a cam and putting it in a 103 with that 96, they're not that far off. Plus there's a huge difference in cost. Now I know there's a lot of cams out on the market today I just picked a handful of some of the highest torque, highest horsepower producing bolt-ons that I could find out there. But anyhow guys, if you've got an 88, I didn't forget about you. I've got a video coming about the 88s. There was just so much information to cover with this 96. And then on the 88, there's a wide range of cams out there for the 88. Plus they're carbureted versus fuel injected. So I decided to do it right and give it its own video. Be sure to stay tuned for next week's video on the Twin Cam 88. We're going to cover the carbureted and the EFI versions of the 88. But for this week, guys, that's all I've got for you. Please don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. You guys ride safe, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for watching.